Hey there, guys. Welcome to Confessions of the Idiots. Everybody wants to confess, but not everyone wants to hear them. Today, I'm joined on a very special isolation tip, isolation episode. Oh, fuck. Isolation tape episode with the great man himself who does far more introductions than me. It is Will Anderson from the title of his own podcast. It is the great Will Anderson. Welcome. <laughs> What an yeah. intro. Yeah. Will also be with Will Anderson. From the title uh, of... Will Anderson from the title of the podcast. <laughs> Thank you so much for saying that. I've been waiting for you to say that for so long on my podcast. <laughs> you know it what just the thing works is, so well. mate, that uh, it's one of those things that it's become an accidental catchphrase because it really just came out of the fact that um, I used to do the podcast and it was called Willosophy. Yeah. Just with Will Anderson. Yeah, it right. wasn't called Willosophy with Will Anderson. <laughs> and then... I stopped doing it for ages and then Apple wouldn't let me log back into it. So I had to start this entire new feed and I couldn't call it Willosophy because Willosophy was already taken by by me, my old (laughs) podcast. But I wasn't, so I literally wasn't able to use the name of my podcast because I already own the name of my podcast. (laughs) So I had to change the name of the podcast to Willosophy with Will Anderson. So technically the name of the podcast is Willosophy with Will Anderson with Will Anderson. (laughs) I had uh, got an ex-girlfriend onto your um, podcast and I, when, when we were in the car once, we are listening to you on the way up travelling somewhere and I mimed along to, I am Will Anderson from the title of the podcast. It was like, <laughs> she just looked at me like, I'd lo- like I had some sort of mental collapse. She's like, hey, did, oh, well, have you listened to this one? Well, it's not, tr- it's not untrue, is it? I did fuck up the intro. <laughs> <laughs> I did fuck up the intro to my own podcast, Will. That I have done over 120 times. Well, you know, it's called Confessions of the Idiots. So, <laughs> There's you know. one big fucking idiot here. I, um, I, I love that your bio, I was saying to you before, Will, before we started this, I love how your bio uh, has changed to podcaster. Because mm. Well, that's, in, that's all that's left in this brave new world. My that's all friend. I can have. <laughs> it's all gone away. And all I have left is my imaginary radio show. <laughs> How are you keeping sane in these weird times, Will? How are you keeping... Because you're such a prolific and productive person and always very busy person. How has it impacted you? Uh, Apart from losing all of your work. Yeah, sorry well, about yeah, that. And yeah, all just, income. Just Apart review like that. Work, hey, Will, income. fuck you. That's the end of the podcast. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> that was Will Anderson for the title of the podcast. Yeah, well, it's affected me massively. Other than maybe Ursula Carlson and Tommy Little, I've really lost the most out of the comedy festival being (laughs) cancelled. I'm sure you're very thankful I brought that up. You were trying to get your mind (laughs) off it for 20 minutes when you do this podcast and no no such thing. No, I really appreciate that, mate. If you could mention some other things that have gone really badly in my life, bring up my bad hips and how they hurt at night and they can't sleep properly. (laughs) (laughs) Just dig the knife in as Um, much as I can. I'm fine. I'm I'm okay. Like, my, my main worry is for others in these times in that yes all my income went away and all my jobs went away but I am one of those lucky people who knows that when everything comes back I will be fine there will be jobs there for me and I will be able to earn a living but there are other people going through what we're all going through at the moment who don't have that security so they're dealing with all the things that we have to deal with and also the idea that their job may not be there for them when yeah. they go back or it might not be there for them. The industry might not be there for <laughs> yeah, them sure. when they go back. So I tend to, even in our own community, you know, like, yes, the comedy festival, it would have been my 25th year in a row. And I had two shows that I was doing there this year and I was really excited about doing it. I'd had such a great year doing stand up up until that point. I just really loved being back live on stage and I was doing some really great shows and I was really excited about it all. I mean, I think last time I was on your podcast, I was plugging the three various shows that I was doing around the country. Oh, God. Well, sorry for bringing it up, Will. (laughs) Um, But now I'm plugging my four free podcasts. So uh, (laughs) please, ladies and gentlemen, if you like free entertainment. (laughs) Will's imaginary radio shows. Yeah. Yeah. It is, though. this, This is an example of where I'm at, is yesterday I learned how to log into my Patreon. Up until this point, I've had a Patreon, but I've never actually logged into it to respond to people or post anything. Right. Uh, things are desperate, mate. I've now <laughs> logged. I've learned how to log into my, my Patreon. I've sent messages to people. Yeah. That's where I'm at. You've recovered passwords. Is that what you're doing at the moment? You've recovered so many passwords that you thought you lost that you didn't well, think you'd ever need. My favourite one is 
Well, on that, because you're absolutely right, because <laughs> Charlie set up the Patreon account. Oh, right. So, so. Every time I tried to log in yesterday before I worked out how to change all the login details, they would be sending these coded messages to Charlie. So, oh, Charlie, now you've got a Google alert. Like, because the email link to this was also one set up by Charlie. And I'm like, you've just got to I, send me all this so I can log in. I, I love it when people, like a friend of yours is using some sort of account that you've got and they decide, I'm going to bot off you and I'm going to use this. And they just go, it'll never bother you. Let's just let me do it once. And then they change computers or something in every five minutes is you've just got another verification code. Did you get another email? Can you send me the email? Can you send me a screenshot of that text? Can you allow location? Can you edit <laughs> Going, fuck off but it is it is such an interesting thing though will because you are like the busiest person in a way that i've known as a very busy person how do you counteract that and make and make peace with that in, in you know in, in your way if i'm being really honest um i think that it's good for me mm. the only way that i was not going to do some work i was desperately in need of a break like i've done a brand new show at the comedy festival you know, every year for quarter of a century. It's an incredible amount of, you know, mental workload if it was just that. But on yep. top of that, you know, I've done television shows and radio shows and podcasts and books and all these other various things as well as that. So some, yep. sometimes when you're doing other things, it distracts you from how big the thing that you have been doing at the core of it is, you know, sure, yeah. the, the 25 years in a row doing things the same way every year going into that cycle where about August when I'm starting to have to put in a, you know, description of the show and, and, and a name of the show for programs, really all you're thinking about until then you start doing that show is that show. Even when yep. you're not thinking about that show, you're thinking about the fact that you should be thinking about that show. <laughs> and sure. so to suddenly have all that just go away, to realize that our profession was like it was fair to say a non-essential industry <laughs> pretty fair no no i think you're pretty fair will i don't think anyone's gonna arc up and disagree with you here <laughs> nobody said we've got to keep the doctors uh the people who work at the supermarkets and the comedians yeah. they're the we, essential yeah. areas weighing up education or comedians should we i don't know which one we should go for here yeah so to it, it reminded me that what we do is actually incredibly fleeting and that we are very lucky that it happens at all so for it to be taken away in this period i think it's been really good for me because it's forced me to slow down yeah and i haven't tried to throw that energy you know into other things or fill the gap because i don't have gaps to fill when everything comes back i'm going to be busy again yeah so there's no point me adding in a whole bunch of different new things now so no, it's been good. Like, I mean, I think in a in the sense of it's an enforced holiday for me, a person who was never going to take a holiday. Yeah. I haven't been, you know, I haven't been like climbing up the walls needing to perform. Yeah. I didn't sit there during the comedy festival at night at 6.50 when it would have been my show other than the first night and think about the fact that I would have been doing a show. No, yeah. I, I think that I've been, I've been quite relaxed and... I want to learn the lesson of how can I take some of this life balance back into my life when yep. I go back into my life. Yeah. I mean, and even a, even an enforced holiday, even the way that you say that, it's like, if you, if you know that a holiday is coming, you can make plans. You can go, this is happening. This is happening. I'm going to start relaxing now. But an enforced holiday, you have no control over that. And so for someone like you just to be in it, I imagine it is quite a hard thing at times to just go, I'm actually in this and there is nothing I can do. So I better relax, but I never know if there's, it's kind of like forced meditation. I remember when I started doing meditation for the first time and I was like forcing myself to do it and go, no, you have to be relaxed and you have to do this now. And there's nothing more unrelaxing than forced meditation where you're yelling at yourself. So it is a, I think it takes time to get used to an enforced holiday and an enforced break. Well, I had the, double advantage in a way because I was talking to you about this off air but we moved house in yeah. the middle of it we were meant to be moving house after the comedy festival and yeah. uh, then of course that got cancelled and so our plans to move house got moved forward and then they almost got cancelled because of course it got to the point in the pandemic where we're not sure whether we were meant to or allowed to move house and it turns out we were and mm. but we had to do it all in such a confined and safe way you know total social isolation you know yeah. under the cloak of darkness 
22 hours in the car with, you know, two dogs and a cat. It was the whole thing, but it was a project to concentrate on. You know, you had to pack up the boxes and because you had to do everything yourself. You know, this in other times, I would have been a bit busier. We would have outsourced more of what we were doing. But suddenly in these times, you couldn't have anybody over to pack up your stuff at your house. You had to do right. it all yourself. You had to then unpack at the other end, install things at the other end. So we didn't have internet or television for three weeks here. And again, just having that break from the constant update of the news and what was going on. So not only had I, I had an enforced holiday from my work, but I also had an enforced holiday from the world a bit, from that yeah. daily grind of the 24 hour news cycle. And I think both of those things really added together to give me this overall relaxed feeling because I just wasn't caught up in yeah. constantly monitoring a situation that I could do nothing actually about. Do you feel like you were easing yourself into that anyway, Will? Because I mean, you were putting your phone, I remember you taking the apps, you're telling me you're taking your apps off the phone, you know, like taking Twitter off your phone and actually making the phone black and white as well. So that wasn't that constant stimulus. Do you think that you were already kind of winding your way into that? You were, you were, you were preparing for Armageddon without even knowing it. Well, I was aware of how much those external forces shape your brain and how you think about the world. That yeah. was what I was becoming increasingly aware of and how they do it in ways that we don't notice. Yeah. And I think that's sometimes why you have to change your phone to black and white or you have to take Facebook or you know, Twitter off your phone is because otherwise you still will look at it. You yeah. don't have enough willpower. There is yeah. too much trying to manipulate you and scare you and shape your thinking. And it's the same with not having a television. Yeah. I could easily still not watch those news shows or not catch up with those things. But the yeah. minute you have the internet and the minute you have television, you go back to monitoring them all again. Yeah. Whereas actually physically taking those things away, make sure that you can't. Yeah. I think it's such a smart thing to do when I, I love swimming well and I um, right now I can't swim and that's kind of like my daily meditation. And I, I remember just going in my head going, when I started swimming a few years ago, I was like, this is going to be perfect because for an hour a day, no one can contact me. There is no one that can contact me. I am by myself in the pool. No one can reach me. And then I had the smart idea of getting an Apple watch. Mm. And look, I could check a text when I was doing a tumble turn, Will. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember someone saying to me, you are the saddest person in the world. And they're not wrong. That was the height of how sad it is to go, I'm going to get an Apple watch so I can measure. I've got a bad heart. So I was like, I can measure my heartbeat. I can do this, but it doesn't mean that you don't get emails and texts on your phone at the same time. And you can check them in between laps. And that is the craziness that we live in where I think what you're doing is very smart. And what you've done in the past is such a smart thing to do because if you can't actually switch off and take that out of your, out of your mind, like I was getting, you know, this, podcast i get fucked confessions as google alerts you know i get i get you know and so i'm looking at someone and it's always like the ones i don't use it's always like i had sex with my dad and i'm like oh god and that's popping up <laughs> that's popping up while i'm with someone and i'm going oh no and they're looking at me and they're going this isn't good <laughs> this is what he does with his spare time these are the alerts that he wants <laughs> I, I don't know why, but he stopped in the slow lane to check an alert that says I had sex with my dad. I don't and think then smiles and moves on. Serious about swimming. <laughs> but the, the, the greatest thing about, uh, I think, about this time is that for me personally, I've been able to continue conversations with people that I really like. And I've been able to continue reading the most fucked confessions to people so people feel better about themselves in these times, Will. And I have found three confessions today, Will, to get your opinion on these people. Because the first confession, Will, comes from a guy by the name of Toby. Toby confesses, I've done something I think most people can say that they've done. So it's Pretty broad right now. Oh, that could okay. be that could be swimming. That could be mm. eating. We don't really know what it is at this point. That could be breathing, <laughs> sleeping. Should we go on, Will? Should we name all of the things that it could be? Something that most probably can't admit, but of course they've done it, and that is to go too far on a prank. All right. So I don't know if Ooh, I've okay. ever gone too far on a prank. Have you ever gone too far on a prank, Will? 
I don't think that I've gone too far on the prank. No. So on our on our sample of two people, we've got a hundred percent. I don't think most people have done this. I think you've actually led with your chin there, buddy. I think you're like, oh, come on, we've all gone too far with the prank. Right? Yeah, yeah. No? no, no, none of us. No. Yeah, it's like you're doing. You're trying to be relatable. We've all gone too far in a prank. No. <laughs> trying to do stand up about relatability. You, you <laughs> see, my friend and I always love pranking one another. All good friends do. So he's, he's really assuming Again, a lot. <laughs> I don't believe that is true. I don't think that all good friends enjoy pranking each other. That just makes no fucking sense no. at all. All good friends love scaring the shit out of each other for a good 30 seconds, really elevating their heartbeat for a good 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> trouble is, you never really grow out of it. Is that, is that the trouble, Will? Again, There's a lot of other trouble. <laughs> I, again, I just really feel that this guy only sees the world through his own experience. He just imagines that everything that he does, yeah. and I'm assuming this is a guy, by the way, because yes, this yep. is just, the, this is, yeah, of course, this is a <laughs> Of course guy. it is. No question. <laughs> I won't even check. No question. <laughs> yeah. Definitely a fucking guy. This man child who has not grown up out of his childhood, childhood prankish ways yeah. and now thinks that the only way you can relate to another male human being, I assume the other person is also a man. He's Correct. Friend, and... Instead of being able to hug each other and say that they love each other, they've been involved in this 20 year prank war. But finally, one of the pranks has gone too far. He should have yeah. just given him a hand job, yeah. got it over and done with, and just grown up. Said, I loved you, chuck some money down and move on. That's, that's, that's all you can do. <laughs> one prank here, one prank there. And before you knew it, you're 35 years old. Mm -hmm. Isn't that a great measurement of time, Will? One prank here. <laughs> One prank yeah. there, you're 35. Mm. Yeah, we've it's, all been I mean, there. it's poetic. It just starts with a little prank and then a little prank in return. And you're like, well, what's the harm of a slightly bigger prank? Yeah. And then there's a slightly bigger prank in your return. And you're yeah. like, well, I could leave it at this. But you know what? I think I've got a slightly bigger. Oh, my God, I'm 35. <laughs> what do you think this? Well, you wake up one day and you're 35 after the biggest prank of your fucking life. What do you think, Will? What do you think this prank is going to be? If you say, if he's building a confession on this, what do you think yeah. a, a, a prank so big could be? He had sex with his wife. <laughs> <laughs> his own wife is a prank? I dare <laughs> you. <laughs> hey, do a prank on your wife. Have sex with her. <laughs> well, Jimmy and I were friends for a very long time. Always kind of have been. He's dirt cheap though. And three years ago, I lent him $150. He didn't have his card on him. And so I bought him drinks that night because we were out with the boys. Of course, you're out with the boys. You're going to have a few drinks. You're going to have a few bourbon and cokes. Mm. I imagine they haven't. 150 bucks though. You, you're having more than a few drinks for 150 bucks. Yeah. Unless he's really into the cocktails. Mm. The real high but shelf even cocktails. Then, still like 10 cocktails. Yeah. <laughs> That's still quite a lot of drinks. You also know that I'm not a big fan of cocktails, Will, because I said put them on the high shelf. That's where they put the good ones. <laughs> They're pre-made on the high shelf. <laughs> I imagine that's what happens with cocktails. I kept asking him to pay me back. I always went straight to Jimmy and said stuff like, pay me back. But mm. he just didn't. That's a good way to know. There's no in and out with that, is there, Will? That's the only way to know. What do you mean by that? You can't read into that. Pay me back. I don't know if he wants me to pay him back or not. I mean, it's direct. It's straight to the point. It's three words that gets the message across. <laughs> three years went on and it's like, it's me, Toby. But why the fuck don't you pay back a mate? He kept pushing it to the side and saying he didn't owe me any money. So I thought I'd get him back. Bear in mind that this was three years down the track and I'd literally run out of options. So, Will, you run out of options with your best mate, Jimmy. You've run out of options. You've said, hey, pay me back. And then you've also said, hey, it's me, Toby, pay me back. So you've done that probably twice in the three years, I imagine. What do you do at that point? What would be your next option? If you want that 150 bucks, Will, what, well, would, firstly, what would you do? Well, I'm going to say you or I might have said it twice in three years, but I get the impression this guy's brought it up every time. <laughs> He and Toby have been, so no, he's Toby, isn't he? So, yeah. so sorry, every time Toby. we've been together, yeah. he has brought this up. Pay me back. 
me back pay. Like any way that he can say it, he has yeah. been saying it. And anytime anything else comes up, you be like, oh, I saw my friend Bill. I oh, was speaking about bills. Here's a bill to you that you need to pay back to me. And he just starts clapping, slow clapping, pay me back. Me like he would, he would, back. he would be the worst like, person to hang out says, with. Pay me back. Yeah, he spent two hundred dollars on fifty t-shirts that say "Pay me back." He's exactly. really in the red for this. So one night, when I knew Jimmy would be out walking, as is his wont, so he likes walking mm-hmm. well, I mugged him. I put a stocking over my head and full pranked him by holding out a knife and taking his wallet. Now, Will, when I read this, I thought, that's not a prank. <laughs> no, you robbed him. <laughs> How you're different? Not just, you're not allowed to just say your crime is a prank. Like, you, you, you put a mask on and got a knife and you robbed the guy. He was not going to give you the money. So you... Like, this is some, you know, underbelly shit. This is some Melbourne underground mafia shit. A guy owes you 150 bucks. Like, you would have spent 150 bucks on the balaclava and knife, you cheap fucking motherfucker, just to rob your mate. Like, to rob night. your mate. This, this confession reads very differently if you, replace, if you replace the word prank with mug as well. I robbed a mate. We've all robbed a mate in our lives. Like he's, he's decided on this word prank. It doesn't really stack up. And I can't imagine him saying in court when he's, you know, going, it was a prank, your honor. Like uh, yeah. mugging someone I, at I, knife I, point. In fact, my, my lawyer, Steve O, will now speak on behalf of pranks. <laughs> no, you can't just say it was a prank. Oh no, it wasn't a bank robbery, your honor. It was a prank robbery. <laughs> we were prank. just pranking the banking institution. <laughs> So, one night, when I knew Jimmy would be out walking, as is his wont, I mugged him. I put a stocking over my head and full pranked him by holding out a knife and taking his wallet. It's fair to say that Jimmy was petrified, but I got what I wanted. I took his money and, don't worry, I left his wallet in his letterbox. So, Willie's a good friend. He still, he left his wallet in his letterbox. But it's been making me feel bad ever since. I never so you wanted... robbed your mate. <laughs> no, Will, pranked. I think you'll find he pranked his mate. But... You mugged your dear friend, your lifelong friend. You petrified him over $150. Because he hasn't told his mate, I guess is what we're about to get to, right? Yeah. He's yeah. never revealed. See, that's the difference between a prank and a robbery. Like, that, that right there. That's, that's the, the one difference. difference. <laughs> He hands over the 150 bucks yeah. and then you pull off the stocking off your head and go, got ya. This is the only way I could get the 150 bucks. Exactly. Possibly if he'd done that, you still could have said that this was a prank. <laughs> but I watched a lot of Hamish and Andy's TV show and not once did Hamish put a balaclava on and rob fucking Andy Lee at night boy. <laughs> and then didn't tell him about it. The footage never, never. went to air and he never told him about it. <laughs> But it's been making me feel bad ever since. I never wanted to play another prank on Jimmy. I never wanted to hurt him. But he's been telling the boys how scared he was that night. And it's also Mm. interrupted his sleep. And that's not like Jimmy. So we don't know enough about Jimmy, but now we know about his sleeping habits. So now, what do I do? I can't even look at him right now. I can't even be in the same room with him without feeling this immense guilt. I feel like it might rip up the friendship if I tell him after one hilarious prank that scared the living shit out of him. So that, that comes from Toby Will. So that hilarious prank, just one hilarious prank that could rip a friendship apart. What do you think he does in this situation, Will? What do you think that Toby needs to do to Jimmy? Um, well, I just imagine that the only thing that Toby can do is... Uh... Another prank. Right. Um, Jimmy, Jimmy's making him feel uncomfortable. Yep. Um, G- Jimmy's the problem. Jimmy needs to be eliminated. In the Take ultimate him out. prank. Yeah. What's the ultimate prank? Is it killing him? Is it going as far as to kill him as a prank? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. He's That's one of my favourite pranks. He leans over the coffin and he just yeah. whispers, gotcha. <laughs> that is the ultimate prank. Ends with death. Because you could also give the eulogy and just say it was a prank. Pranked him. It got him. Got him a beauty. Look at him, look at him lying there. Lifeless. Give me that 150 bucks, <laughs> didn't he? 
Now he's We've all learned something. All. Lessons learned. Yeah. So, trouble sleeping. Now he's sleeping with the fishes. Pranked him. Got him. So you think the only way forward, Will, is to actually go down, double down with another, with another huge, hilarious prank? Because what can you do? Another you can't... huge, even more hilarious prank. <laughs> even more hilarious. your friend. There's nothing funnier than that. Because you can't come clean to someone and say, no. I mugged you at knife point and waited three years to come clean three years that he, oh no it was sorry that was the the time that he that he kept bringing up the money we don't know how long okay. this has actually been but it has been quite a long amount of time because he's worried about he's worried about jimmy's not sleeping anymore and also toby hasn't brought up the 150 dollars for quite some time i'm imagining as well unless he's doubling down and trying to get another 150 out of him i mean this is that you have stumbled on something amazing here because it's got to have gone one or two ways. Yeah. Suddenly, mysteriously, because firstly, <laughs> it was the exact amount of money. Right? You would have put change in there in the letterbox <laughs> for the last, for the last three years. He's been going, where's my $150? Yeah. And then mysteriously a mugger slash prankster, but, Hilarious Jimmy prankster. Doesn't know that at the time. Hilarious yeah. prankster. But at the time, terrifying mugger. Yeah. But yeah. actually, we know hilarious prankster. We know that will. <laughs> Has robbed him at knife point and taken the exact same amount of money. Yeah. And then Toby has never again mentioned one hundred fifty dollars. Or as you've raised, has had to cover his tracks because he feels the guilt so much. That yeah. he's constantly bringing up the 150. He goes, I know you got robbed for 150, <laughs> but remember, you still owe me 150 as well. Do you think he would bring it up after he said he's been mugged, just straight away? What What did he take? Did he take some money? Will you actually owe me 150 dollars? Oh, that so wasn't the one. And, and if you were Jimmy in that situation, you've got to go with, oh yeah, I got it out to give to you. Oh, amazing! <laughs> of course. And then now there's a really long way around all of this. Like they're going to keep up this lie that maybe they both knew. Because maybe Jimmy knows. Maybe Jimmy knows and isn't letting on. Because I'm sure Toby would have told one of the boys. Don't you think he would have told one of the boys at some point that this is what he did? It's a hilarious prank. No, because, because it's not a hilarious prank. He actually just robbed his mate because he wanted his $150. But Sorry, I keep forgetting that, Will. No, you... I think if these two have been involved in this battle of hilarious pranks, and this is how they define mm. hilarious pranks, because mm. maybe the thing is here that Toby hasn't gone rogue. Maybe right. this is in the style of the, what they think are hilarious pranks that they've been playing on each other for right. all this time. So maybe Jimmy is actually playing a hilarious prank back on Toby because Jimmy knows it was Toby because he we, we would not shut up about 150 bucks. Yeah. The robber was the exact same height as him, sounded exactly the same as him. The robber even said, give me 150 bucks. And then he has not, he said it, it's the same as he's been saying it the whole fucking time. Literally, he said, you uh, uh, pay me back. He said, pay me back. <laughs> it's so weird. That's exactly what you say. So now he in return. He returns pranking his friend yeah. by pretending that he's not sleeping well. He might be sleeping absolutely fine. Yeah. Um, and he's probably just putting out this disinformation to the group of the boys where he's like, oh, you know, tell him that I'm really struggling with it. Tell him that yeah. I'm not sleeping. And then he yeah. goes home and goes, oh, this is a hilarious prank. <laughs> this is yet another hilarious prank. Yet another in our ongoing series of hilarious pranks. I think you've absolutely sold that, Will, because that would be something that will pop up on candid camera at some point, I'm sure. Some hilarious prank. We're moving on to the next confession, Will, that comes from Serena. Serena writes, there I was at a wedding. Did you expect to find Serena there, Will? We don't know much about I mean, Serena. Sure. Yeah. We'll go I don't know it. much about her so far, but she seems like the sort of person who might be invited to, to a, a wedding, wedding or be a participant in a wedding? You have no reason to assume otherwise at the moment. It was the no. wedding of my best friend, Joanne, marrying her long-term boyfriend, Warren. Yeah. Warren and Joanne had been the perfect couple for a very long time. A very I mean, long time. What a, what a beautifully named couple, just Warren Beautiful. and Joanne. Imagine getting that it invitation just... in cursive text. <laughs> Warren and Joanne. Sorry, we actually can't give you cursive text. 
we have a rule. That makes sense. Sorry. <laughs> Your invitation has to be in Comic Sans if Warren is marrying a Joe heir. If it's was, you get nothing. That's such a funny idea that they they go, we actually cannot legally, we cannot give you cursive text. We're not allowed to. I don't want to get an audit yeah. and, and they find out that Warren got cursive text. Joanne, we're fine with. We'll do Joanne. We'll do part of it in cursive. Well, your name is we're not doing not Warren. fancy enough for the... Mm. Yeah, well, here's the thing. We can't do, to be honest, we can't do Warren or Joanne because this is fancy cursive writing and fancy cursive writing can't slum it with a Warren or a Joanne. I'm sorry. That's when lipstick on a pig. You know, <laughs> fancy cursive writing has become fancy cursive writing because fancy cursive writing has standards. We're not going to lower the cursive text standards for you, Warren. Don't think that. Warren swept Joanne off her feet. I remember thinking at the time, who is this Warren guy coming into our lives? But we absolutely loved it after a while. Warren was the kind of guy who looked out for me in any trying time. I had my own relationship problems over the years and Warren was always there. Of course he was. That's the kind of guy you imagine Warren is. I also imagine Warren is the kind of guy that would play hilarious pranks on his friends. Oh, absolutely. Warren's <laughs> been involved in a 30-year prank war. In fact, I imagine whatever this scenario is, we'll be involved in one of his hilarious pranks. One of his hilarious pranks. As the wedding day grew closer and myself being the bridesmaid, everything was set to be low-key. As low-key as they come, really, they weren't going to be any speeches, just a ceremony where friends and family get together and Warren and Joanne might say a few words and sing a song. In brackets, it says, if we're lucky. So I think Warren and Joanne are sadly known as a couple that might sing a song at a wedding. Well, like, I don't know, sadly, because they said, if we're lucky. Oh, you don't know if that's like... We don't know if it's... Yeah, right? we don't know if we're lucky. Yeah, yeah, we don't know about that. Yeah. And a guy called Warren, I'm just not sure. I don't know how to feel about know. it. It's really I just hard. feel about, like, maybe Warren and Joanne, you know, just they harmonise very well together. They sound oh. good together. They've got the perfect voices. Exactly. Now, did I mention that Warren is from the UK? That's what nope. she says. Nope. You did and not mention it. Also, <laughs> Will, what, what is great about these people as well is they don't go back and proofread. You could just do a little edit. Maybe put that at the top. You can, <laughs> you can always look over your six sentences and say, did have I, I mentioned... mentioned <laughs> did I mention that Warren is in the UK? Because I refuse to read back over what I've already written down. Not this horse shit. She won't read over six sentences to find out if she's mentioned that Warren is from the UK. I think that's a pretty good plot yeah, point. Even the fact that she like has forgotten in six sentences whether she's mentioned it or not. Even without checking, you should just be able to remember whether you brought up that Warren was from the UK. Well, that's kind of important, she writes. So what? So it's a really important. Point <laughs> so if it's important, it you would definitely remember if you brought it up. Yeah. Have you ever done a set up to a gag though, um, Will, when you're on stage and worry that you've missed out a key point? Oh, I have missed out a key point. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. No, I've, uh, I've. So perhaps I should have done this. Yeah. Um, but yes, no, I've. I've often, in fact, sometimes in comedy, if it's too convenient, yeah. you will actually just point out to them at the time. You're going, that's important. Remember yeah. that. <laughs> I, I used to do um, a lot of, um, when I was doing stand-up, I did a lot about um, a facial palsy. And I remember sometimes doing a whole gag about like a guy. I should stop calling them gags. That's ridiculous. Um, but I, um, I should call hilarious them hilarious pranks. pranks. <laughs> One of your hilarious pranks. My live hilarious pranks. Um <laughs> But I remember talking about... Oh, like, sorry. I, You're talking about my stand-up career. I like to refer to it as my series of hilarious pranks. <laughs> you may call it one thing. I call myself a live prankster. <laughs> but I remember doing, like, doing this horrible story about a guy who was having... Uh, basically, it was like a disabled swimming race and it was all about my facial palsy. And I remember not setting up that I had facial palsy right at the start of it. And because it was quite a serious story and quite a big build up to this disabled swimming race, it just looked like I was having a go at so many different people all at once and did not give a fuck where it was going. And then I remember getting to the end of it and it was quite a crucial moment where then I had, I got no laugh, nothing. 
And then I got off stage and then realized that I forgot to set the whole thing up. And I was going, this was going so well up until this point. Like up until this point, everything was landing fine. And then I had to go off stage and then come back. I asked if I could come back out just to try and get the audience back on side. Rather well, than just like that, you think you were a terrible person. Just a terrible You're like, I, I know that I'm not going to get any laughs here. But Don't need them. I just need to point out, I missed one important detail. <laughs> yeah. I myself have a disability. And yeah. therefore, now look back over that stuff. You would have enjoyed it if it was yeah. from someone who was part of the community. Have a review. You've been hilariously pranked. <laughs> yeah, good night. So yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> Gotcha. Well, that's kind of important. So Warren has been building up his best friend, Clint, for quite some time. He says that I really need to meet him one day because he's tall, dark and handsome. And also <laughs> might shag me if I'm lucky. There you go. Okay. Wonderful reasons right. to meet someone. If it, you're lucky. If you're lucky. She said, if you're lucky twice, Joanne and Warren singing and that she might cop a root off our good friend, Clint. It had been quite some yeah. time. Uh, I feel like most of the things that she's been told in life that happened to her only happen if she's lucky. If she's lucky. <laughs> it had been quite some time since I'd had sex and I was very much looking forward to the opportunity, the wonderful opportunity. But the night before, I'd eaten some bad seafood. So, well, where do you think this is going? Do you know where this one's going so far? Eating some yeah, bad seafood. Yeah, she's going to shit herself. She's going to shit herself. It's your absolutely. podcast. At yeah. some stage, <laughs> someone's going to shit themselves. That's my brand. <laughs> oh, did I mention? Because this is important. At some stage during this podcast, somebody will shit themselves. <laughs> and this is Will Anderson from the title of the podcast. Very important to mention. And now I think you know where this story is going. Of course we do. It's the wedding day and I'm feeling awful. It's all pretty casual, but I really can't focus on enjoying anything. Joanne and Warren are making speeches and I'm feeling absolutely awful. I feel like I'm going to shit myself and I can't do anything. What do you do in that situation, Will? Do you get up and leave as a normal person? If you're going to shit yourself at a wedding, do you just get up and leave? Do you walk off? No, you know what they say about a wedding, you know, something old, something new, something borrowed, something brown. <laughs> it's it's a wedding tradition. <laughs> Beautiful age old tradition. It's good so luck just go for being it. shit on by a bird. If someone <laughs> doesn't shit themselves at your wedding, then you're doing it wrong. Yeah. And then um, like a bouquet, they throw it over their shoulders. I believe I that's what happens. I would imagine. I would imagine that's what happens at monkey weddings. <laughs> they just <laughs> throw their shit over their shoulders. All at once. And, um, you leave. Absolutely, you, you leave. leave. Any yep. situation where you are going to shit yourself, you yep. leave. <laughs> you leave, yeah. Be, do the right thing and just leave. Just walk away. Yeah. Joanne asked spontaneously for me to make a speech. I politely decline the offer, but she insists. Come on, she insists. Warren starts clapping for me to come up. So I guess he's slow clapping. He sounds annoying. This is why I didn't get the cursive text. Every smiling face is on me as I slowly tighten my butt cheeks, but it's too late. I've done it. I've shit myself. I keep shaking my head and it takes quite a bit of time for Warren to stop chanting. Then Joanne glares at me and it's all over. As soon as the attention is off me, I go to the bathroom and clean myself off. Joanne doesn't talk to me for the rest of the day and Warren doesn't end up introducing me to Clint after all. What a shame. I decided to get a taxi and just get out of there. I went home and didn't return to the party. I was feeling so, so sick. Everything was ruined because of some bad seafood and Joanne sent me some pretty nasty messages saying that I ruined her special day because I didn't make a speech. It's now been one whole week and I don't know why I haven't told them what happened. Is it the right thing to do to tell them the reason I didn't get up and make a speech is that I shat myself? that I didn't just not want to talk, that I actually did do this? Or is it too late to be bringing up that sort of stuff out of nowhere? I wonder if they'll even believe me. So that comes from Serena. Well, so she shit herself. She didn't, she didn't get to, she wasn't lucky. She didn't get to shag Clint. What do you think, what do you think Serena should do in this situation? She shit herself and she said, I don't want to make a speech. That's the, that's the crux of it. So I absolutely I would tell them that you were, that you shit yourself. That is why wouldn't you? To, 
totally understandable. Yeah. It is much less understandable that you refuse to do the speech on their special day. Yeah. That's a thing that would stay and ruin your relationship with them forever. Yeah. But you had some dodgy seafood the night before. Yeah. And you had shit yourself and you did the only thing that anyone could possibly do in that situation, right? So Not got up. They've, got to un- they've got to understand that. That yeah. is absolutely fine. And also a week is a fine time to tell them because yep. You don't want to say it immediately because then it gets around the wedding and the party, right? <laughs> right. Your, fear, your fear about like, it's like, what happened with, you know, why did she get up and do a speech? Oh, yeah. You know, she actually shat herself. Everybody's talking about it. But a week yeah. later, actually just talk to them about it. Say, here was my situation. And yeah. they will know that it's true, that you're not making it up. Of course. Because here's why. No one would make up that they shit themselves at public, in particularly at a wedding. Like no one's going to say that to cover anything because there's barely anything worse than shitting yourself at a wedding. The only thing worse than shitting yourself at the wedding is refusing to get up and do a speech at your friend's wedding. So you had the second worst thing happen. You handled it absolutely fine in that situation. Yeah. The seafood the night before might've been a bad choice if you were going to a wedding the next day. Or hilarious prank. Other than that, you are blameless. Or hilarious prank by Clint. (laughs) Because he strikes me as a hilarious prankster. (laughs) Clint has got some dodgy seafood the night before. Yeah. And he's slipping to Serena. Because <laughs> it's, it's such a weird thing as well not to come clean about, isn't it, Will? Like, there's, there's such an easy out to this. Like, it doesn't need to be. And that's a problem with most of these confessions, to be honest. They leave these things to sit for a really long time like sitting in your shit at a wedding. They let them sit for such a long time and just go, I might just hide under my doona cover for a while. Like that's ever going to solve anything. It is the most appropriate of all analogies or metaphors, or I can never quite tell the difference, Um, particularly in a situation when you're talking about shitting yourself at a wedding. But (laughs) you shit yourself and then she did not sit in there and not clean herself up. You've got to clean up the shit. So you've shit yourself here, clean up the shit. You will feel better for having cleaned up the shit. They will be fine. They will understand the idea that you had food poisoning, something that everybody in the world has had at some stage, and we all know that it's completely uncontrollable, is a very easy thing to say to some people compared to, I refuse to make a speech at your happiest day of your life. (laughs) I just went really silent. Yeah. Because imagine like how you, you think you've ruined it. That's what you should say to them. You think I'd ruined it by doing what I did. Imagine if I hadn't. Imagine if I got up there and tried to make a speech on your special day while my own shit was running down my leg. How about that? How about that being the memory of your special day? The smell of seafood shit diarrhea running down my inside thigh when I tell everybody that you guys are really good singers together and I hope you do a song. (laughs) If we're lucky. I mean, oh, imagine that. Imagine the horror of that. I think that's a really good thing to say. And you can't say that... Often you can't open something with saying, actually, I'm a hero, but I really do believe that she would be a hero if she avoided yeah. that situation. The butterfly effect. <laughs> yeah, you did exactly what you should do in that situation. Well, imagine all the photos, all the group photos after you've had the bridesmaid shit herself and still going ahead with all the photos, still going ahead with the rest of the day, like nothing's the problem. Grandpa, I'm looking at your wedding photos. Why? Why are everybody's faces screwed up in such a horrified look? Why is mummy covering her face? <laughs> well, well, we've got one more confession that we're going to get through, and this one comes from Anthony. Anthony confesses, I kissed the wrong person. Absolutely the wrong person. How do I know? Well, I knew them. I love how do I know. Like, how do I know that I kissed them? Or, or how do I know? <laughs> How do I know that I knew them? I don't know what that meant. It was my boss at a work party. It all got a little bit too much and she was there schmoozing with the crowds. I'm I'm, I'm sorry, it is schmoozing, I'm pretty sure. But for some reason I went schmoozing, (laughs) schmoozing. I prefer to call it that. I always kind of fancied her and we worked together for over 10 years. I always thought she was really easy on the eye. And at the work Christmas party, there was a lot of alcohol being consumed. Of course, at a work Christmas party. And usually at a work Christmas party as well, someone fucks up. 
like someone has a really big moment at a work Christmas party where they're going to regret something Monday morning. That's, that's just a rite of passage, I believe. Yeah, I, I, I'm going to say I believe also because I was trying to think about it when you were talking and I don't think I've ever been to a work Christmas party. Yeah, it'd be a very small function if it was just you. Yeah, well, I'm a sole trader. The, the Will I Anderson Christmas party? Hi, <laughs> I'm Will Anderson from the title of this party. <laughs> just you by yourself and you still have a lot of regrets Monday morning. I've I did a lot of shit. A couple shit. of job jobs over the years, yeah. like the radio stations and those sort of things tend to have work Christmas parties, but I don't think I ever went to any of them. So right. I don't think I've literally ever been. So I am in uncharted territory. <laughs> Everything that I'm going to speculate upon about work yeah. Christmas parties, I've mostly got from popular culture. And right. popular culture is not always hilarious. I imagine people popping their ass and yeah. hooking up with their boss. So that's what yeah. you imagine the work Christmas party is. You just reading up in your spare time about work Christmas parties, like really wanting to understand them. What is a work Christmas party? Now, I'm a married man and so is she. We knew when we signed that paper. She's a married man? She's a married man too. You know that. You know she's a married man. He doesn't need to go on and explain himself. We, we knew when we signed the paper that there was no cheating involved. You know that when you're getting married and that you're not meant to be kissing other people. Do you think that's a big part of being married, Will? Is that one of the rules, do you think, of getting married? Well, I mean, for a lot of people it is. Yeah. I would not like to define the nature of, of people's relationships. And yeah. a lot of people are in, you know, open versions of relationships. Some of them don't know that they're in open versions of relationships. <laughs> but you look at the statistics on, you know, couples who are together exclusively for life as opposed to couples who are together and yeah. some point in their lives have, you know... He's yep. the boss of a Christmas party. And I don't think that he's all alone in this scenario. No, no. I think, I think there are a lot of people maybe that have kissed this boss at this Christmas party. That's kind of the whole point of the thing. So he says the whole point of getting married is that you don't kiss other people. But, and that is absolutely fine for that to be your definition of marriage. Also. Yeah, if you want it to be that, that's fine. But yeah. after a few too many rums, I make it from the dance floor and we start kissing, kissing and kissing, kissing and kissing. Isn't he so descriptive, Will? Isn't he a beautiful writer? Kissing and kissing, kissing and kissing. She tells me that we need to go into the bathroom and I think it's a terrible idea, but of course the rum gets the better of me. We make our way into the public toilet and within minutes, I'm thrusting my heart out. Thrust and thrust. It's beautiful. Thrust and thrust. Thrust and thrusting thrust. and thrusting. So you've got kissing and kissing and thrusting and thrusting. I tell her that I really need to go as soon as it's all over. I've expelled... Also, what, what, a, what a great romantic he is. <laughs> like, the way that he describes the beautiful act of lovemaking in a yeah. toilet at a Christmas party is thrusting and thrusting. And no, there doesn't seem like there's anything else involved. It's just thrusting. <laughs> It's just him well, having a little thrust. Oh, they sorry, Will. There was kissing. There was, yeah. was kissing and kissing and kissing. And then You're right. The thrusting and thrusting and thrusting. Oh, he is a romantic. I tell, okay, so if, if, think about this. Well, this is the, the next bit he says. So he is a really beautiful writer because you've got kissing and kissing. You've got thrusting and thrusting. The next sentence is, I've expelled myself and I need to get out. <laughs> expelled yourself? What a, what a way to write something. I've expelled myself. It's oh also my the God. longest word he's actually used in this whole confession is expelled. Oh my God. I'm expelling. I'm expelling. Oh, where do you want me to expel? So I'll hail an Uber down. Also not how you uh, regularly get Ubers. Well, I think you'll find I hail an Uber no. and I tell her that I really need to go as soon as it's all over. I, hang on, as, as soon as it's all over. So is he telling her, hang on, has he hailed the Uber, what, mid-thrust? Mid-thrust. Is that what he's saying? Probably before he <laughs> expelled like... himself. He clicked. He was, he's such a charmer, Will, that he was waiting with the open Uber app as he's thrusting. And then as soon as he expels himself, he goes, confirm. Looks he's really like, I'm going to expel confirm. in about three minutes, so I'm just going to order an Uber for five. <laughs> 
<laughs> so I howl and, uh, when I get home, my wife laughs at me and tells me how stupid I am that I will regret Monday morning. But she, in brackets, my wife, will have no idea how much I will regret it. It was a four day weekend, so it's a lot longer of a wait. Right. And I don't know how to address my boss on Monday morning and see what happens. I know I probably need to tell my wife, but how can I bring it up to my boss? Is it something we can both block out or do we need to be adults about this and try and have a conversation? I feel like I'm in a romantic comedy, haha. So that's how he ends it. My favourite romantic comedies are usually about thrusting and expelling. That's just me though. I don't know about you, Will. Um, okay, firstly, yeah, you've got to check out how the boss is with it first. Sure. Absolutely. Like, because yep. maybe like her, her attitude is also, let's just forget this there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it sounds like it was quite a forgettable experience. <laughs> I imagine, <laughs> you know, a couple of quick thrusts and you ordering an Uber mid thrust is probably not going to want her to come back for seconds. I Definitely. feel like that itch has been scratched on her behalf. Yeah. And she's probably regretting it heaps more than you're regretting it right sure. now. So there is a possibility that it could just be a one-off flip yep. and you can go on. But my, it worries me that they were kissing on the dance floor yep. at what seemed to be an office Christmas party. So I imagine that more people than the boss have seen what's going on. Of course. And a lot more people know that he's been expelled as well, of course. But a lot of people would know at that point that there was something that went on. So he probably needs to address it before it comes from someone else. That's probably the, the best way to handle a situation like this. I don't think Anthony yeah. will handle the situation like this, but I feel like it's probably the best thing to do to actually. Well, I think, on. yeah. Tell, tell your wife, you know, obviously you need to tell your wife and you need to see if she'll be understanding. And what I imagine he'll do is he'll, he'll tell her and uh, that'll take about two minutes and he'll have ordered an Uber away <laughs> from the house in three minutes time, ready to go. And it's the same Uber driver every time, just going, oh mate, what now? Like, you've done it again. Or it could be the other thing, which is like, maybe he doesn't, uh, say anything about it and he hopes that he can get away with it yeah but he knows that if at some stage his wife hears about him like and she brings it up she's gone i heard that you you know thrusted the boss at the office <laughs> christmas party in the toilet yeah um he goes well gotcha you've fallen for one of my hilarious pranks <laughs> Yet another hilarious prank. I think you and I are going to start getting out of things in the future, Will, by calling them hilarious pranks. I think that is 100%. Agree, this is another hilarious prank. <laughs> Will, at the end of that, who would you like to hear from again? You've got three people. Who would you like to actually check in with and follow up on? You've got Toby, who did play the hilarious prank on his friend by mugging him and taking exactly $150. You've got Serena, who shit herself due to some bad seafood at a wedding. And you've got Anthony, who expelled himself into or, or on uh, his beautiful boss? Well, I, I, I never want to hear from the expeller again. He's been <laughs> expelled from my world right. and my mind. Yeah. I would like some updates on the other hilarious pranks <laughs> that Toby has got up to in his time. Right. Uh, but I, no, most of all, I want to hear from Serena because I want Serena just to come clean. I know, yep. excuse the, the horrible pun there, but I would like her to come clean and make peace. Yeah. Uh, with a Warren and Joanne and, yeah. uh, you know, um, maybe have that maybe second chance with seafood. Clint. Yeah. Maybe avoid wow. the seafood. Yeah. Well, Will Anderson at the end of that, people know how to find you. They know how to find you on, on Twitter. How do they get onto your Patreon page? If they are in a position to support your three podcasts at the moment, or are you doing the Four, AFL as well? Yeah. Four. So we're doing a uh, toe fop and faux fop. Yep. So folks back my, very occasional podcast is now back in a weekly roster because that's what you do when you're unemployed. So yep. Tofop and Fofop that are both uh, going towards 300 episodes each. Wow. Um, yeah. Both of those will clock over 300 in the next month or two, Yeah, uh, which is pretty amazing. And then there is Velocity uh, and that's patreon.com philosophy, W-I-L-O-S-O-P-H-Y. And at the moment I am going back through previous guests on the podcast and doing a little, you know, post-corona update on you yeah. know, how they're handling it all. 
what their perspective on life is and how it may have changed and how they think it might change the world. So they've been really fun episodes and there will be a new episode of Two Guys, One Cup, our AFL podcast, despite the fact that the AFL season has not been on, that podcast is still coming out semi-regularly. <laughs> Great. The AFL won't stop that podcast. Well, it rarely, it rarely has much to do with the podcast, <laughs> even when the season's on. We, we barely missed a beat, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> well, Will Anderson, thank you so much for joining me on Confessions of the Idiots. I hope that you'll come back sometime soon. My pleasure, mate.